Welcome to Trip Talk. I'm Jennifer Napier Pierce with the Salt Lake Tribune. If you've been thinking about buying or selling a home, you're not alone. Numbers released yesterday show Utah home sales, new home construction, home prices, all of these factors continue to trend upward, but not quite as rapidly as we've seen over the past year. And that slow growth is good news, say those in the industry. But what does it mean for consumers? Is it a good time to sell or to buy? Today on Trip Talk, we're talking Utah real estate with uh, Dave Fredrickson. He's president of the Salt Lake Board of Realtors and an agent with Keller Williams in Salt Lake. He's joining us here in the Trip Newsroom. Dave, thanks so much for your time today. Thank you for having us. Also with us, uh, Trib reporter Tony Semerad, who wrote today's cover story on residential real estate. He's also here in the newsroom, and you can find his story, Slump No More, at sltrib.com. Tony, hi. Hey, how's it going? Also with us, for the commercial side of the real estate picture, we turn to Jared Booth. He's vice president with Coldwell Banker Commercial Intermountain, and he's joining us from his office in Salt Lake City. Jared, great to have you. Thank you, Jennifer. Happy to be here with you. And you can join our conversation today. Are you thinking about putting your home on the market? What expectations do you have for buying a new home? What factors are you uh, looking at when you consider this decision? Send your questions and comments on real estate here in Utah along to the hashtag TripTalk on Twitter and Google+. You can also leave them in the comments section of our page at sltrib.com. Uh, Tony, I'll start with you. Give us the lay of the land. What does the latest data show? Well, we had uh, three separate reports come out uh, kind of in the last uh, week or so uh, that il illuminate this. Uh, the Salt Lake Board of Realtors sales and price data, uh, as well as a study of uh, housing construction, and then some, uh, some lending data from one of the key lenders, Zions Bank, around here. And, uh, you know, the evidence is that uh, there was a, a kind of a surge on all uh, those measures uh, over the summer. And while things continue to grow, the third quarter data shows it uh, cooling off just a little bit. Um, it, it turns out it was a kind of a relatively hectic pace uh, over the summer, which I think kind of matches our sense of what the, the seasonal pattern is there. Uh, but I think the low interest rates were kind of pushing that too. And from the interviews I did, um, you know, related to our A1 story today, um, you know, oh, oh, that's that is kind of a beneficial cooling effect you know I think uh, you know when you're in the when you're talking to people in the real estate industry they've gone through some major brain damage you know over the over the last uh, six years with this very uh, uh, sharp downturn and so uh, slow is good you know slowing growth is good as far as they're concerned and so those, the, the, they're all kind of healthy, uh, healthy indications. Mm -hmm. Dave, uh, very good news from your perspective. We don't want another housing bubble, right? That's correct. So, uh, I, I mean, is that where we were headed with the, 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 the red hot growth that we saw over the last year? If things didn't start to slow down, were we sort of headed toward that wall again? Yeah, I, actually, I don't know that it was heading towards a, a uh, housing bubble, so to speak. I think what it was doing is making up some lost ground that we had in those years of decline. Um, you know, gathering some of those uh, statistical numbers back up is a good thing, but getting too far, um, you can't sustain double-digit growth and not price some people out of the market. So what is slowing us down? Dave? Well, I don't, uh, year over year, this is a, a um, time of year where things are gradually slowing. But again, there was a lot of pent up demand. We got through a lot of that demand in the heated summer. Um, interest rates, there's, there's a little bit of uncertainty, the government shutting down, things like that. Uh, people this time of year just want to be safe in the, in the winter months, that type of thing. But uh, again, the numbers slowing down, the percentages are still up. We are still on an incline market. It's just not double-digit incline, which again, I think is, is healthy. It brings back to a more balanced buyer-seller market. Hmm. Uh, again, we're, we're talking Utah real estate with Dave Fredrickson from the Salt Lake Board of Realtors, uh, Tony Semerad with the Salt Lake Tribune, and Jared Booth, who is with Coldwell Banker Commercial. And if you want to join us, send your questions or comments to the hashtag TripTalk 
on Twitter or Google Plus or put them in the comment section at our page at sltrib.com. Um, this comment from Muskrat McDoodle, McDougal, my realtor told me there's never been a better time than right now to buy or sell real estate. I mean, that sounds like such a sales pitch. Is it, is it as simple as that or is there something to back that up? Is now uh, a great time to, to, to buy or to sell? Um, Dave? Uh, I, I think it's a great time to buy and sell. Well, like I say, we've we've recovered a lot of the equity that was lost in the in the down years. Interest rates are still at, at ridiculously low prices. Uh, uh, they're up a little bit from the historic lows that we had last year. But for those of us who've been in business for a while, I also remember the times where we had mid-teen interest rates in the 14, 15, 16, 17 percent range, and now you're in the fours. That's an incredibly affordable uh, interest rate for long-term financing of your home. Hmm. Jared, let's turn to you for the commercial side of this picture. Your numbers, I understand, lag a little bit behind residential data, but I mean, in general, how is it looking uh, for office space, for retail space, for uh, you know, the, the commercial side of things? I appreciate you making those distinctions uh, because it's different in each segment. Uh, we have retail that uh, tracks differently than office, which is a different market than industrial, uh, and then investments uh, similarly is a, is a different market. I would say in general though, across the board, we're having generally increasing uh, occupancies, so lower vacancies. Um, the, uh, the market is generally improving. Uh, it's cautious in that it's uh, still smart money. Um, the uh, uncertainty nationally um, uh, certainly comes into play uh, with uh, new regulations and things that people have to factor into uh, operating their businesses, but in general things are improving. Have you seen the double-digit growth that we've seen on the residential side uh, earlier this year? When you say double-digit growth, I, I don't know if we've seen as rapid a growth across all of the segments. If you were to get into uh, specifically a Class A office downtown or some other areas, there may have been some uh, uh, faster growth than just in general. But traditionally, our commercial markets lag the residential markets by a year or a year and a half. And so we are seeing, again, measured increases, uh, positive growth, but it's uh, by no means um, it's, it's very measured and uh, um, thought out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Tony, I invite you to, to jump in with questions if you've got them. Um, do you want to jump yeah, in with sure. anything right now? Okay. Well, you know, what, one, of the, w one of the things to note here is that, uh, you know, Utah has a kind of a built-in upward pressure on demand just because of the population growth. And um, I was very intrigued by something that uh, Mr. Fredrickson mentioned in our interview that that we're, you know, one of our hallmarks is kind of a slow and steady, uh, you know, that we've we've been kind of in the the, the three to four uh, percent appreciation uh, kind of golden range, uh, and that that's one of our hallmarks um, uh, in in this market, and and you know maybe in contrast to say you know uh, Las Vegas or California or something like that where you have these big sort of uh, uh, business cycles. And, and, and I wonder if, um, you know, and maybe this is a, 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 a question for both our guests, if, if that kind of, uh, you know, sort of built-in population growth uh, that we have in Utah isn't kind of a factor in that, in that sort of slow and steady tradition that we have. Uh, we'll start with Dave. What do you well, think? Well, I'm, I'm sure it is, Tony, and thank you. Um, like I said before, uh, Utah generally enjoys a 3 to 4 to 5 percent appreciation rates, and when we when we start getting it to double digit is not not our norm and what that does is you increase in a double digit factor not uh, you know not taking into consideration the lost ground that we we're making up but as far as sustainability what you end up doing is pricing the lower ranges out of the market if the homes are not affordable if the prices go up too far uh, those people just getting married and having their first home can't afford a place to buy so we need to keep a, our market buyer seller in balance in order to keep the rungs of the ladder increasing and you are absolutely correct uh, uh, the Utah market does have a built-in uh, lower end growth and and if those people can't buy then the people that they're buying from can't move up and so it slows our entire entire ladder down so to speak 
Mm. Uh, Jared, I mean, how does the population affect the commercial side of things? You know, a, a rising tide lifts all boats, residential and commercial. And so it generally over the years, I've looked to see that positive job growth uh, coupled with either in-migration or net population growth from from uh, uh, births or, or families here in, in the state uh, tend to it give uh, they equate to rising real estate values both residentially and commercially. So again, positive job growth in migration and uh, that population growth that Tony mentioned. Oh, Here's another question from uh, T Taylor 013. As a condo owner, I'm wondering if it's in my best interest to sell now while downtown properties seem to be going for good prices or to keep my property and deal with the ongoing hassle of being a landlord. If I can get a good deal from a buyer, is it worth it to sell? Um, Dave, what, what does the condo market look like right now? Across the board, all, all aspects of the residential market have been improving. The condos market um, uh, also suffered a little bit, only because the number of units in a particular development will have a, a great impact on the price. and and. Um, Buyers actually establish the prices, um, and offer coming from a buyer will tell a seller what the home is worth. If it works for the seller, then great. There's a transaction that can happen. If not, then the seller can maintain in the ranks of all the other condo owners. Right now, the condo market is on the incline. Um, again, like with the rest of the uh, residential market, the the growth in each particular development kind of pretends. Uh, uh, is is with regard to that particular development. Um, it's a great time to sell right now. Uh, it's also a great time to buy, and the best time to do, uh, for a seller to sell is when they have a buyer. And there's a lot of buyers out there. Uh, Tony, can you talk? Uh, uh, th this question talked specifically about the downtown properties. Um, you broke it down in your story by zip code. Some of the the, the hot zip codes where uh, we've seen a lot of uh, home price increases. Um, we're, we're talking Holiday, Grantsville. Can you can sort of break it down that way? Where are home prices really increasing, particularly over this time last year? Where are they dipping a little bit? Yeah. Well, the 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 gains are broad, and and you know I think we're um, we have to keep in mind that we're comparing with each year that elapses, we're comparing to a prior year that was you know uh, his, historically low. Um, so the gains, um, especially in Salt Lake County, seem to be very kind of widespread. I mean, one of the things that struck me was, uh, you know, um, just uh, two zip codes, um, you know, one digit away from each other, uh, you know, 84103, which is kind of avenue-centered and runs up the canyon. Uh, I'm not going to recall the figure uh, right off the bat, but had kind of a, a you know, upwards of 350000 average price. Um, the the 84104, which is kind of, uh, you know, Glendale, Pop, Poplar Grove, Central City, kind of rolling out uh, um, south and west in Salt Lake uh, City, um, ha was kind of on the lower end. So, I mean, uh, I was surprised in the data, the, the range of the medium prices. Um, one other thing I would note, I, I, I just got done doing a story on a, a new um, housing project that went in in Kaysville. You know, it's a classic example of a of a county that's kind of running out of land uh, where uh, building can be done. It's you know, uh, fourth most populous county in the state and and least land mass, and it had some of the highest uh, 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 appreciation figures. Um, so you know, those those homes are uh, uh, gaining in value um, quite a bit. So I mean, um, in answer to your question, the gains seem to be fairly widespread over. Over most of the zip codes, I think there were a couple of couple of stragglers where, um, and even in those cases, it's it's not growing as quickly as it was. It's just it's it's kind of slowed down a little bit. And you know, just by way of shameless plug, we've got all this uh, zip code data available on our website at um, sltrib.com. You can look up the third quarter data and find out how things are are doing in your uh, zip code. Um, hey, I had a question for for Mr. Booth. I'm I'm kind of intrigued at how uh, lending patterns, you know, which were a, a, a huge deal in our downturn. It just, you know, a lot of people weren't qualifying for home loans. I'm I'm kind of curious how 
the, the, the lending picture plays out for uh, commercial real estate, we kind of think of, you know, home ownership as involving a traditional 30-year fixed mortgage and that sort of a thing. The kinds of deals we're talking about at your end are, are obviously more complex and, and, and involved a different kind of lending. Do you benefit from, from the low interest rates just as, in the same way that the average homeowner does? Absolutely. I'd love to, to chat a little bit about that. I, I also want to make a comment on your uh, distinction of different areas uh, having different valuations and appreciation. We're seeing that very significantly in our segments of the market also. For example, industrial up to 25,000 square feet has been quite red hot. Mm -hmm. um, you get up to 100,000 feet and larger and you have a little bit uh, more um, product because there's some things that are being speculatively built. Um, but in regards to your question on interest rates, absolutely the interest rates uh, impact us. Um, right now, uh, in the past, over the downturn, this SBA financing, which is the government-assisted financing, equivalent to an FHA uh, program on a residential side, has been a mainstay. It's kept us in business. It's, uh, it has lower um, payment requirements and still very good rates, even though we've had that slight increase. Uh, I just checked in with the lender prior to this. Uh, and he indicated rates somewhere in the five and a quarter uh, to five and a half side for the SBA. Oftentimes the bank's portion of that loan is a little bit less, so you still get a blended rate about five percent, or just in the low fives. That's phenomenal. Um, uh, investment real estate, when people buy properties to have the cash flow come off of it, is directly affected to the interest rate. It's often just a, a simple spread between what people can borrow their money and what they can pay for the property. And so when you have interest rates increase, for example, we've seen this recently with large uh, apartment transactions. As rates bumped up, there were a lot of transactions that were pending. They had been put together, hadn't closed, and they either fell apart or the pricing structure was retraded in order to keep that margin between the interest rate uh, and the return that they were looking for. So, so lower interest rates help all of us uh, Jared, you just mentioned uh, speculative investment. Um, this is a, a comment from Funkin Teleki. I don't know about that. Um, uh, I guess I had pretty good luck. Sold my house last week. Um, sold my last house in three weeks at the first of the summer. Made about 15% on after owning for three years. Uh, I, I see this as somebody who's flipping homes that became very fashionable to buy a home, uh, fix it up when, you know, when the property value was at, were at rock bottom. Um, now, are we seeing as many people in that sort of residential, um, they're looking at residential real estate as an investment opportunity. Um, and Dave, is, is it a good thing? Well, sure, it's a good thing. Uh, there are some people that, for one reason or another, are not in position to own a home, and they obviously um, their option is to rent. So, to provide a good rental base is is obviously important for, again, the chain of things. Um, uh, is it good for a neighborhood? Is it good for you know that that kind of is is with the mindset of the landlord, obviously. Uh, you can tell a difference between an owner-occupied neighborhood versus a rental neighborhood a lot of the times, and, and that's just basically the care or the buy-in to the neighborhood. And with home ownership, there's more of a buy-in. And so, you know, is it is it a good thing? Yes, it's a necessary thing. Is it the um, is, is it everyone's American dream to rent forever? Probably not. Uh, this is another comment uh, from 52678. If you're in need of a home to live in and you find one that fits your needs, is in good condition, and if you plan to live there for the next five to ten years, then it's a good time to buy that particular home. If you want to buy rental property, you need to do a very careful cost analysis to see whether it's really a good investment. Um, this comment on Twitter from Tony D. Morris, what do you find is the primary concern of the public in real estate? Uh, Dave, thoughts? Um, that's a real good question. Uh, every every buyer and seller has a different needs, different backgrounds. I think probably going into it with the full knowledge, they need to get with the professional who understands the markets, the neighborhood, the forms, uh, the transaction in general, and take away some of the uncertainty. I think the uncertainty is probably what scares the majority of buyers and sellers from making a prudent decision. Well, um, and, and Jared, if I could, yeah. 
if oh, I sorry, could add Tony. something real quick. Um, you know, another important thing to remember is just how harsh that um, real estate downturn was for a certain segment of homeowner. I mean, you know, that, that first wave of foreclosures really involved a lot of kind of esoteric, uh, edgy mortgages, if you will, um, and that sort of popped the bubble. Then you had a whole second wave of foreclosures, and I mean, one of the eye-opening things about that kind of that coverage for me was that, you know, I uh, before we got into it, I, I I think I sort of thought that foreclosures were happening in sort of isolated neighborhoods around the valley, and in fact, it was a it was a, a very widespread phenomenon. We we plotted the dots on maps based on data from Realty Track, and it was it was a sea of red and. Um, my, my point being that, you know, I, I think one of the intriguing things about this is what effect that uh, experience, again, for uh, a, a certain segment of homeowner and the subsequent generation, I mean, people that saw their parents, um, you know, kind of, you know, foreclosed on or, you know, locked into an underwater mortgage, I, I, it's still uh, to be seen what if what long term effect they may that may have on home ownership patterns and 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 Mr. Fredrickson and I have talked about this, you know, we'll see whether, you know, there's a, a, this next generation will be a lot more hesitant about home ownership or whether they'll they'll also buy into the American dream over time and, mm. and and you know we're seeing very high rental rates now. Um, whether that remains the case over time, I guess we'll see. As we've seen at home sales uh, increase, have we seen uh, foreclosures go down? Where do we stand on the foreclosure front, Tony? Well, there was there was a pipeline there. It's a it's a it's a process in Utah. You you sort of uh, get behind on your mortgage, and we had measures on that. Uh, people that were you know 90 days behind. Uh, then you know if the if the bank does indeed foreclose, there's a, a trustee sale, and we had a uh, paper trail on that. And then there was this sub substantial, uh, it's referred to as real estate owned or REO kind of inventory, you know, where the bank tries to sell the home and 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 can't do so, and so it it may stay on the market for a while. And I uh, the evidence suggests that you know we did have a kind of an REO stock that was holding the market down, and I'm going to say. You know, this was maybe a year and a half ago, something like that. And the the evidence is that that's that's cleared out, and that that inventories uh, have have uh, you know uh, are are smaller now. Um, I think the one measure I I read is I got about a nine month stock for for current demand levels, and I'm uh, pretty clearly this this upturn in home prices reflects the fact that a lot of those REOs have been are are, are no longer on the market or no longer hanging. You know, hanging the market up, and and a lot of the home builders are getting into the game now, and and there's a you know uh, something like 2,000 new housing starts over the last year, and or or much higher than that. I think that's a that's a Greater Salt Lake number, that 2,000 number. Um, and in fact, a lot of the cities that were hardest hit by the foreclosure crisis are the ones where a lot of these new homes are going in. So, hmm. I mean, I hesitate to say it because it was very traumatic, but it looks like that's largely behind us and we're kind of settling down in that regard. Hmm. Uh, Dave, I'm, I'm curious about the the refi business out there. Um, we don't have a lender on our panel, but I mean, from what you've been able to, to glean from the data, are, are, are people refinancing? Um, I mean, the mortgage rates are inching up. Uh, they're above those historic lows in the threes, but now um, they're still really, really low in the in the four range. So, I mean, are are people still uh, refinancing their existing homes? Absolutely. Um, I've got some friends that are lenders that are um, uh, that is keeping them alive and has for the last year or so kept them alive uh, as the market was down. And and Tony and I did have a conversation. I'd like to go back and and just talk to him. Or I will not talk to him. Um, <clears throat> go over something he just said. Currently, right now, we have roughly a five five month inventory, and and normally they're they're calling a four to six a balanced market. Uh, anything less than a four month supply of homes, for example, um, the sellers get to choose their prices. It's usually a multiple offer situation, and that's what forces the the prices up further. Anything longer than six month, sellers have a lot of competition, and so buyers get to. Um, make the offers they want and it kind of brings the prices down but much like um, much like a pendulum 
at one point in time we were too far to the left and, and when the market crunched it came too far to the right and it's kind of balancing so as you look at the zip code to zip code um, up, up a point down a point that type of thing it's pretty much the settling of that pendulum it's it's never going to be a total total solid as far as the foreclosures uh, right now we are looking at just a little over one percent of our uh, the market is foreclosure uh, that's down from almost three and a half percent here a couple of years ago so the market obviously is improving and with the with the appreciation that we've enjoyed on houses there are more and more number of people that are no longer underwater meaning short sell uh, is their only option asking the bank for some forgiveness a part of the loan if the, the value of their home is less than they owe and that was a good percentage of the market home builders um, the home builders association um, we enjoy a great relationship with um, in the market down downturn they were devastated it was it was difficult supply and demand says you know there's a ton of supply out here there is no demand to build new um, traditionally Utah has roughly one-third of our our sales are new homes that dropped to about 10 percent here last year and has, has climbed back to about 16 percent now so they too are on the on the gain and that's that's good for everyone if I could make a sure, comment please, on that, yes. okay. I, I think it's interesting that as we look back, um, Career Builder indicated that Salt Lake City has generated more than 62,000 jobs since 2010. It's produced more job growth per capita than any of the other 100 largest metros that they surveyed. So that's 534 new jobs per 10,000 people. That again shows that this rising tide of increasing uh, job growth and uh, the migration equates to the state values going up. We've seen that. So we've had, we've had more demand. One of the things that we, we don't always realize is how lucky we are to be where we are. And the great situation, while it has been painful for everyone, myself included, Dave, I know we've all been there through that downturn, but it, it may be that we have actually been at the top of the mast of the sinking ship nationally. And, uh, and as we look around and look at all of the kudos that we receive um, nationally and internationally for our stability in business, we actually see a lot of people wanting to be here. And so it doesn't mitigate, doesn't indicate that it hasn't been tough, but I think it could have been much, much worse without some of the policies that we have to help us. Yeah, you please know, in, in oh, addition to population growth, uh, it's it's hard uh, to, to overestimate the effect that that those job growth numbers really have in this market. Um, I mean, we are, it, it, it's kind of an untold story in a way. We're the envy of a lot of other states. I think the number that I saw in kind of the greater Salt Lake area through the end of August, it was about a 32,500 uh, jobs created number. And I think we're rounding out to about 3% for 3% job growth for that period, um, which, you know, <laughs> Um, and it's been as high as four on, on uh, certain certain time measures. And um, I, I mean, I had one source tell me that was an astronomical number. Yes, if you look at if you look at certain other states, and you know, um, there's a lot of kind of uh, a lot of that that's happening just kind of purely in the in the private sector. There there are businesses that are expanding, but I think the state you know deserves some credit. Uh, there are a lot of go ed initiatives and and tax incentives that are have been offered that are that are luring those jobs um, to the state. And so I mean that's uh, that's playing in in a in a very significant way to this to this housing market. Hmm. We're, we need to, to wrap up this conversation. I guess I'll ask uh, our guests, I mean, the forecast. We're headed into a holiday season, typically um, a little bit slower on the, the real estate sales side. Uh, what's in the forecast for the next quarter? Um, Jared, I'll start with you. Sure. And so for uh, maybe just a general outlook, the question that you, you asked before was, was, is this a good time to buy or sell or lease? And I'd just quickly like to address that. I think it is an interesting time where we have more demand commercially across the board. Um, the, uh, it, there are more buyers and more tenants out there for on the supply side. If you are looking and interested in getting into a project product, uh, interest rates are, are wonderful. Uh, and again, with increases in those interest rates, your purchasing or leasing power goes down. So it, it is time. Uh, we know that they're not making any more land 
that I've been able to tell in our valley. And we are bounded by mountains on the east and the west. We're expected to grow in population to double over the next uh, 40 to 60 years. Over the long term, real estate will be a very good investment here. I think it's important for you to have a good advisor that helps you understand the nuances of what areas, what types, those are the best things. So generally, I'd say that uh, over the next quarter, things tend to slow down a little bit over the winter, but the good thing is, is that the buyers and tenants that are in the market are very serious. And so you don't have quite as many, but you have serious folks. And so uh, I don't know that it's a time that you should stop or, or wait. But, uh, I expect generally in general improvement over all segments of the market next year, uh, all things staying the same. And in the residential side, Dave Fredrickson, uh, continuing that slow, steady growth, you think? Absolutely. And, and as far as in the, the fourth quarter and heading into 2014, like Jared said, this time of year, um, people don't just test the market by putting their home up for sale through the holidays. They are serious sellers and, and, and buyers not wanting to make any major uh, expenditures going into the holidays might take a little lesser approach to Christmas and some of the gift buying things to prepare. So those people that are out looking as well are serious buyers. And, and, and so the higher percentage of closed transactions once an offer is received, I think going into the holidays, uh, it's a great time. And, and besides, it's, it's nice to walk in and look at a house that's been decorated and envision it and it smells nice and, and, and all that kind of stuff. As far as, as, far as um, adding to what Jared says, um, find an advisor. Also find an advisor that, that listens to you, uh, what your needs are, what your time frames are, uh, what your plans for the future are, and, and goes into more of a consultive type not just necessarily a sales pitch, but more consultive. So um, you can make a long-term decision, um, and and I can see nothing but positive for the for the um, real estate industry and and residential as well. And Tony, well you'll be keeping an eye on this whole uh, story as you continue reporting. Uh, Tribune reporter Tony Summerad, thank you so much for your time today. Oh, thank you. Dave Fredrickson with the Salt Lake Board of Realtors is also an agent with Keller Williams Salt Lake City. And Dave, thanks to you as well. Thank you, Jennifer. And Jared Booth with Coldwell Banker Commercial Intermountain uh, joining us from his office in Salt Lake. Jared, thanks for your time today. Thank you, Jennifer. And again, you can read today's cover story complete with housing prices by zip code at sltrib.com. I'm Jennifer Napier-Pierce. Thanks for tuning in to Trip Talk today. Have a great day.